Good morning, Emmanuel. How many love Jesus today? You love him? <laughs> Big shout out to all our locations, Lakeville, Elk River, Maple Grove, Spring Lake Park, and those joining online. We're in the middle of a series called Eyes on Eternity. How many were here last week and you heard it? Others of you that weren't a part, I encourage you to jump in on it. You can find it on our website or on our Emmanuel MN app. It's really important to jump in. One of the things that we talked about last week with Eyes on Eternity is the participant guide. We're really encouraging every person in our church family to do something together outside of Sunday morning. And uh, if you get one of these booklets, you didn't get one, we have them available in the back on your way out. And uh, the Eter Eyes on Eternity, there's a little QR code right in the first inside page of it. And if you scan that with your camera on your phone, it'll take you to a website that's got all the videos for this series where you can sit down and have a conversation with other people. And we've already heard this week about groups that have been gathering together. We've heard about families that did it as a family. We've heard about individuals that did it on their lunch break. And I just wanna encourage you, if you can practice what we're preaching on Sunday, outside of Sunday, it'll actually become a part of you in a greater way. And we really believe that good things are gonna happen as we do this together. All right, now the big thing today though is you're in for a special treat. Jody is going to preach. And I am so excited for you to hear my wife as she preaches. You know, she's, a, she's an ordained minister in the Assemblies of God. She is a faithful leader here at the church. She is more than a sidekick. She is a powerhouse next to me. Would you give up for Jody as she preaches today? All right. I, I kind of like the sidekick spot better, babe, so. It's always good to be here and be able to share the word with you. It always gives me more empathy for him and his job. Wait till next time he speaks, I'll be giving him a lot of extra time and attention. But uh, So last week, Pastor Nate spoke a message, and if you missed it, I would encourage you to go back and grab it. Uh, you can find it on the Emmanuel MN app or on our website. Uh, the videos for the series can be found by using the QR code, but you can also, if you have that, Emmanuel MN app, if you click on the banner that says Eyes on Eternity, you can find all the resources there as well. And if you swipe it, you can see all the resources for 21 days of prayer. So just a couple things for you to know about. So I like deals. How many of you like deals? I like deals, okay, I like deals. I like deals and I like rewards. And when those two come together, that's perfect. So like some of my favorite rewards programs are our American Express, we have a Delta American Express, and we like to charge things and use it for air miles. Now, don't worry, if you're in Financial Peace University, we pay it off every month, not paying interest. I like to say I use it, it doesn't use me, and so I like those rewards. Uh, other stores have rewards. We've got American Eagle, Kohl's Cash, uh, we've got McDonald's. Now, I'm going to tell you some of my bad habits, but... I love McDonald's, and when I was, <laughs> yeah, you can all laugh, okay. I've gotten over the lunch menu. I don't like the lunch menu, but I do like the breakfast menu, bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit specifically. And so I got the McDonald app, and on the McDonald app, they have $2 breakfast sandwiches. And I'm like, cool, this is really great. So I go to McDonald's, get my $2 breakfast sandwich, get my dollar iced tea, and just do that, and then all of a sudden, I got this email, and it said, your, your rewards are about to expire. And I'm like, what? Rewards? I'm getting rewards for using this McDonald's app and getting my $2 bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit? And so I looked, and sure enough, I had all these rewards racked up. I had enough for six free bacon, egg, and cheese biscuits. <laughs> so... Uh, other places that use rewards are gas stations and, you know, marketers have figured this out. The world has figured it out. Businesses use products and reward systems to build customer loyalty. We've got video game makers who give people a sense of if they win this level, they can go to the next level and they'll get a free skin and they get these rewards. I don't understand all of it, but I do have sons who like video games. And then you've got social media. And social media gives us likes and clicks and views that make us get a sense of like fame, that we're doing something great. We feel like we've got these rewards. Now we find ourselves, if we're not careful, living for earthly rewards. But have you ever wondered about God's reward program? 
God is the original rewarder. Now, the Lord spoke to my heart in my, my prayer time back in the spring, and I felt like he said, Jody, do you know I'm a rewarder? And it was like kind of a pause, and he's like, no, I want you to know that I'm a rewarder. And it's sometimes we can know God as Savior, we can know him as healer, deliverer, provider, but do we know him as a rewarder? And so I went on a journey to figure out what that meant. And I came across a scripture, Hebrews 11.6. And a lot of today's message is going to go back to this scripture. So Hebrews 11.6. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. So today, I'm going to share about four ways how we can tap into God's rewards. So when I say tap into something, I'm talking about establishing a connection for a future benefit. So how can we tap into God's rewards? And I want to just say something up front. This is not about earning salvation. This is not about that. We gain our salvation by accepting Jesus. It's a free gift. But when we get to heaven, how many want to see that there's more and that there's some rewards in heaven? So that's what today is. This is about our heavenly rewards. All right, so how do we tap into God's reward? The first one is through faith. So the, the author of Hebrews in this Hebrews 11.6, the author of Hebrews is talking about faith as like a future-oriented thing. The Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And Hebrews 11, where this passage was found today, is often known as the faith chapter. And so the author of Hebrews will talk about later in this chapter about all these great Bible characters of days gone by who through faith they persevered. They persevered through hard times, through struggles, through hardships because they believed that there was something better coming. So faith is a persuasion. It's a moral conviction, especially reliant upon Jesus for salvation. It's our assurance of belief. And in faith, it enables believers to press on for the future and know that God's got something ahead, of it, ahead for us. So faith is motivating. When we know that there's good coming, it makes us want to keep pressing on. So when we think about faith, we must think about the future. Faith is about things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is developed in our lives through reading and studying God's word. Romans 10, 17, so faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. So how to tap into God's rewards? The first one is through faith. The second one is believe God exists. So back to Hebrews eleven six, 6, it says, anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists. What does it mean to believe? Have you thought about that? Belief is a close cousin to faith. In Hebrews 11.6, the definition or the Greek word for believe is pistio, and it means to have faith in, commit to trust, to put faith and trust in. So believe is what we do now. Beliefs are important, and when we believe things, it actually, again, changes the way we behave. So the world impacts our beliefs through information, Sometimes we say misinformation. Sometimes it's missing information. It's through education. It's through news. It's through narratives. It's through truths and partial truths. I always wondered, like, it seems like they're always coming up with a new group of people we're supposed to hate. And I'm like, I don't get that. Like, why do we have to hate someone? I don't find that in the Bible. God loved everyone. So think of other things that impact our beliefs through our influences of our family and our friends. How many of you have seen a group of friends and they all start like looking like each other and they're listening to the same music? So their beliefs are being shaped by the people they're hanging out with. Pastor Nate always says, friends are like elevators. They can take you up or they can take you down. So our self-talk, what are the things that we're telling ourselves over and over and over again? How we're interpreting our world influences what we believe. Belief impacts our actions, which impacts our future outcomes. So what we believe really matters. If I believe I need caffeine to get up every morning or I need a Diet Coke, I'm going to go do that. 
If I believe that nicotine is helpful to me, I'm gonna find a way to use it. If I believe that my boss is out to get me, I'm gonna notice everything my boss does that is negative toward me. If I believe that God's word is true and that he has a plan for my life and that there's something greater than today, that's gonna impact how I live. Pastor Dennis, the founding pastor of this church, used to say this, this is not the land of the living, the next one is. So we need to know that our beliefs really impact. So what does the scripture say? It says, believe that God exists. So what does that mean? Before there was time, God existed. He created the heavens and the earth. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning, the word, was all, the word already existed. The word was with God, and the word was God. We believe God exists, that he created man and woman in his image, and he had them rule over creation. Then sin entered the world, and the penalty of sin was death. John 3.16, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. Do we believe God exists? God sent his only son, Jesus, to be born of the Virgin Mary. He lived a sinless life, and he died on the cross and rose again for, from the dead to save us from our sins. We come to God and believe that he exists through Jesus. John 14, 6, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. It is by openly declaring in your faith that you are saved. So we need to believe that God exists the way the Bible says he does, according to the scriptures. So believing in Jesus determines where we spend our eternity. It's our destination, and Pastor Nate talked about that last week. At the end of this service, the location pastors will give you an opportunity to accept Jesus and help you with your eternity. So believing is your first step in signing up for God's rewards and God's rewards program. And it's our way that we begin by following him. When we believe something, it impacts how we live. So when I um, was in a spot in my life where I was just kind of processing things and just, you know, wondering about some things and I had someone in my life that didn't always represent Jesus in the way that Jesus is. How many of you know people? Maybe we shouldn't raise our hand in church, but uh, don't exactly represent the Lord. And I remember talking to a gal, and she looked at me, and we were just chatting. She goes, I can't even believe you're a Christian. Like, why do you even go to church? Why are you a Christian? And I stopped, and I paused, and I said, hmm because I really believe. And our belief that God exists supersedes anything a human can do to misrepresent him. Our belief in God that he exists changes everything. And the people around us, it doesn't matter. And we all face temptations. And when we really believe that God exists, it's not like some people are just like naturally holy. I don't know if you guys kind of think that, but... Uh, when, we, when we face temptations and we go, no, I believe that God exists, so I'm not going to do that. I know at someday I'm going to stand before Jesus and I'm going to give account for everything that I do and everything that I say, and it changes my choices. So when faith and belief collide, we get that amazing, unstoppable relationship with God, and everything in our life changes. We have new life in Jesus. So how to tap into God's reward? Through faith, through believing God exists. And the third three thing is know that God rewards. And again, we're not talking about like earning your way into heaven and good works. We're talking about what we receive on the other side. So Hebrews 11.6 again says this, and that he rewards. And the Greek, Greek word for rewards is misthapodades. And if you want to watch the video, I pronounce a bunch of Greek words wrong, but, you know, <laughs> make sure you check it out. We go a little deeper into it. All right. So the word mythopodatus means rewarder, one who pays 
back. Have you ever thought about Jesus as someone who pays us back? A lot of times we don't think of him that way. Sometimes we just kind of go into this Christian life if you're not thinking about it and just going, well, you know, what's it matter? I know I should do the right thing. And, you know, you're kind of drudging through. But God wants us to know today that he's a rewarder. He is going to pay us back for what we do on this earth. Luke 14, 12 through 14. Then Jesus said to his host, when you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or sisters, your relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they can't repay, cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Did you catch that? Jesus said something that really can be surprising to us. He said, you will be repaid and your repayment will come in the next life. Matthew 6, 19 and 21 says this, don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and the rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. So why should we think about eternity and heavenly rewards? You know, Pastor Nate and I get the opportunity to pray with a lot of people and lead them to Christ. And sometimes it's like we can be the ringer that comes in when someone's on their deathbed. And we pray with them and believe God that they face eternity but we want you to experience more than just getting into heaven by the skin of your teeth. And next week, the location pastors are gonna talk about the judgment seat of Christ and the Bema seat where we get all our rewards. And so today, my goal is not just to help us all have this great life on earth, but life is so short compared to eternity. And Pastor Nate talked about that last week. It's just a dot compared to eternity. And when we think about all of eternity, we can be so focused on this earth and live for the pleasures and all of a sudden we find ourselves bankrupt in heaven. Like we want to be there, but you know, we might want to do more than sweep streets, right? So that's, that's my goal for this church. All right? So my kids, you know, have, like when we ask them to do some things, like you do things when you're part of the family. So you do some chores and things like that. You help out around the family. But there's other times that we want our kids just to do a little bit more. So guys, will you like rake the lawn or something? Well, mom, okay, I'll pay you 20 bucks or we'll go to the Dairy Queen or something and we want to reward that. And that's what happens even in our Christian faith. There are things that we get just because we're a child of God and things that um, we receive because we know Jesus. But then there are some extra things when we represent him on this earth that he likes to reward. All right, so um, on this book, on the back, there are some resources, and I encourage you, if you want to dig more into some resources, there are some great resources about rewards. And I'm going to take seven things God rewards from the book, A Life God Rewards, by Bruce Wilkinson. And all of these things start with the letter S. So this is pretty cool, the things that God rewards. God rewards us for seeking him through spiritual acts, such as fasting and praying. Matthew 6, 6, but when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. Then your father, who sees everything, will reward you. God rewards us for submitting to your employer. Ephesians 6, 8, remember that the Lord will reward each one of us for the good we do, whether we are slaves or free. Next, God rewards us for self-denial in his service. Matthew 16, 24 and 27. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Now, it's really cool to have missionaries here and hearing their stories and sometimes we can sit back and go, oh, I would never do that. I'd never want to like move overseas. Like who would want to give up the American way? And then when we look at the scripture and God rewards us for self-denial. And we don't have to just go overseas to do that. We can deny ourselves 
here in this world. I think about people who are overcoming addiction. Every time you say no to some addiction and temptation, you're storing up rewards in heaven. Every time we say no to the things of this earth that are gonna just pleasures that get us now, self-denial, we're storing up rewards in heaven. So next, serving those in need in his name. Mark 9, 41. If anyone gives you even a cup of water because you belong to the Messiah, I tell you the truth, that person will surely be rewarded. Next, God rewards us for suffering for his name's sake and reputation. Luke 22, 23. What blessings await you when people hate you and exclude you and mock you and curse you as evil because you follow the Son of Man? When, this, when that happens, be happy. Yes, leap for joy, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, their ancestors treated the ancient prophets that same way. God rewards you when you sacrifice for the sacrifices you make for him. This is the sixth one. In fact, Jesus says that people who give up houses and things on this earth, it will be multiplied in heaven. Luke 6, 35, love your enemies, do good to them, lend to them without expecting to be repaid. Then your reward from heaven will be very great, and you will truly be acting as children of the Most High. Catch this part. For he is kind to those who are unthankful and wicked. Sacrifices we make for him. The last thing, God rewards us for sharing your time, talent, and treasure to further his kingdom. Matthew 6, 3 and 4. But when you give someone in need, when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private, and your Father who sees everything will reward you. So along with the rewards in heaven, there's promises and blessings here on earth. But when we live according to God's word, we're storing up treasures in another place. So as you think about those, think about some of them that you can do. How can you store up treasures in heaven? We don't want anyone bankrupt when we get there. So how to tap into God's rewards? We got faith, believing God exists, knowing that God rewards, and my final point, sincerely seek him. And I love how our missionary friends talked about sincerely seeking the Lord and uh, Hebrews 11.6 again says this, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Have you ever been kind of looking for something and uh, send the kids in to get some ketchup and you're like, no, you actually have to move things in the fridge to find it? Well, Nate got asked to speak at a men's retreat in Alaska. And Alaska was like one of those things that were on my bucket list. So I'm like, if I can go, that would be great. And I thought, what am I going to do at a men's retreat? I'll just sit at the hotel and have devotions or something. So we went in October, and it was great. The first day we had there was like a three-hour time difference, but we had time to see some sights. And then, you know, I was like, hey, are you going to see the Northern Lights? Yeah, we should probably see the Northern Lights. That's really cool. So if you look at the Eyes on Eternity booklet, this is the Northern Lights, that's kind of from this trip. That picture is not from this trip. Uh, so anyhow, yeah, I'm like, yeah, that looks like you, Nate, standing on a Jeep. <laughs> I do have to say this, though. It was really funny going to the airport in Alaska, and they're like, okay, now these are the roads. Read the list. Don't go off of these roads. If you do, they're not coming to help you. And I'm like, wow. And they're asking us, what's your deductible? And we're like, we've never been asked this. And we're like, we've never been to Alaska before, so probably do need a jeep up there but anyhow so nate and i were like let's go look at the northern lights and so we do a little checking okay the first day that we're there we're a little tired but this is the best day to see it and so we asked the people at the hotel like okay where how do we do this you know northern lights i had pictured them just like i don't know what i pictured just bright stars or something and didn't necessarily know what we were looking for so like, yeah drive the loop if you go there if it's too bright then you keep driving and so Long story short, we went and drove around looking for the lights. We're like staring in the sky. And I'm like, Nate, do you see anything? No, I don't see anything. Is it too cloudy, do you think? Are we facing the right direction? I wonder, like, okay, maybe if we keep looking. And then, of course, we do what every good person does, pull out your phone and do a little research. And I'm like, I didn't know finding the northern lights was going to be this hard. And so you start looking, and you're like, no, you have to, like, 
find a certain window of time. They might come out for 15 minutes or a couple hours. I mean, people get igloos that you sleep in so you can see the lights. They have people come and wake you up, and we're kind of like doing the cheap version on our own. And so finally, after a while, Nate's like, you know, Jody, I'm speaking four times in the next couple days. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I didn't know it was going to be this hard. Maybe we should just skip it. So because we had so much other things going on that weekend, we're like, we'll just, we'll just try it another time. If we, maybe we'll see it on our ride home, ride right back to the hotel. So we get back, and we, we miss the northern lights. And the next morning, we find out we missed them by a half hour. <laughs> but we had this nonchalant attitude when we were seeking it because we had so many other things going on. And sometimes, I think, if we're not careful, we can approach God that way. We're like, yeah, we know God's there, and we, we, we should be able to see him, but maybe we won't find him. And, and really, sometimes we need a tour guide to help us. Our friend sent us the pictures. He was out on a bike ride. I don't know if we got that up. Um, he sent us some pictures going, hey, guys, this is what the northern, looks like, northern lights look like. He sent them. He went on a bike ride. And sometimes in our journey with the Lord, we need to find other people who've been there and done that to help us find what we're looking for. God rewards those who sincerely seek him. Jeremiah 29, 13. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Now I have another story about seeking something. Uh, my, I have a wedding ring, and I was like, oh, I haven't had those ring checked for a while. I should probably check my ring, and I didn't, you know, because we're all busy and we just keep moving. And I was at Target, and I'm like paying for something, and I hit my ring, and all of a sudden I watched my diamond go, go flying a couple weeks ago. And I'm like, that's my diamond. And there's a line of people and the lady's like, what? I go, I think I just knocked my diamond on. I think I just watched my diamond go flying. And she's like, oh, excuse me, everybody. I'm, we're going to do some cleaning. So she's stopping them. And I just had this different attitude. And I'm like down on the ground. Going, <laughs> oh. And it's like, hey, maybe it's time for an upgrade. No, it's time to give to kim kingdom builders. I'm not going <laughs> to do an upgrade on my ring. So then everything stopped. I didn't care how I looked. The guy at the store, he got on the ground and he found it. Found your diamond. Praise the Lord, right? Thank you, man. <laughs> um, so then we found it. But how many know I had a different attitude about searching? I wasn't going to leave until I found it. How can we sincerely seek the Lord? We set aside regular times and places to pray. And again, there's resources on the website about praying. If you swipe over on the Emmanuel MN app, you can find ideas about how to ignite your prayer life. Matthew 7, 7, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened unto you. Another way to sincerely seek the Lord is to read and study the Bible. And we've got the app that we do devotions together. I would encourage you, if you haven't done that, download that app and we can read and study together. Begin reading the words of Jesus in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Ask a friend, go to Alpha. Next thing we can do to sincerely seek the Lord is fellowship with other believers. When we go to church and we come together, it matters. Just like our friend was able to tell us how to find the northern lights, sometimes you need a tour guide, and that's what discipleship is all about. Someone who can help you find the way and sincerely seek the Lord. So the last thing is we really need to surrender and submit our lives to God. And as we seek him, we listen and we find him. That's the best thing about seeking the Lord. The Bible says we'll find him when we seek him with all our heart. What if we all lived with eyes on eternity? What if we were looking for the rewarder and living for a life that's beyond this one? The people of God would be unstoppable and our relationship with him would be everything. And as the worship team comes, I want to pray for several groups of people here today. There are those of you who are here and you're like, I've never really even accepted Jesus. The faith and the belief part, I am not quite there yet. But I just want you to know that our location pastors are going to give you an opportunity at the end of the service to make that first step. You will never regret that. Others of you might say, I gave my heart to the Lord a long time ago. But if I'm going to be honest, I kind of got stuck on worldly things. I didn't even realize it. Like, I love Jesus, but I haven't been thinking about eternal rewards and today, I want to make a conscious decision to do that. Still, others of you, you might be hesitant and go, you know what, I'm just going to do it because it's the right thing to do. But God wants you to know today that he is a rewarder. 
and he wants you to endure and persevere to the end. So after I pray in a moment, the worship team is going to sing a song for us to reflect on. And I just want you to take some time and go, do I believe that God exists? Where is my faith at? Do I believe that God is a rewarder? And what kind of rewards am I gonna go after? And then lastly, do I sincerely seek him? Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for every person here and in all of our locations and watching online. God, I thank you, Lord, that you are a rewarder. And God, even if it takes the email popping up in our inbox to remind us that you're rewarding us, God, it will help us keep persevering. I pray, God, for those who have their hearts toward you and have lived for earthly things, I pray that today would remind them of why they're living with eternity in mind. I pray, God, that you would strengthen each one of us. Lord, for those who are willing just to keep pursuing you without the rewards, help them, oh God, to know that you're gonna reward them anyhow. And God, that you are faithful. Pray, God, that you would have your way, speak to each one of our hearts in Jesus' name, amen. Give my life again, every breath I have. You are my reward. Jesus, take my life, a sacrifice. All I have is yours. All I have is yours. You are my reward, all I'm living for. I surrender all my life to you. All consuming fire, you are my desire. No one else but you, and I surrender all my life to you. Jesus, come on. Jesus, here I am with open hands lifted high, lifted high to you. Could my heart contain all your love for me? You're all I need to know. Thank you. 